uh, insert Christmas music here. I don't. <laughs> I was gonna have some kind of clever music. It's a spring, it's spring. springtime wonderland out there. It really is. But we don't have the worst of it. Those in the Northeast are definitely worse off than we are. Oh my gosh. It my is family. snowing. My family's the... from up there and uh, they're getting it way worse. We've had like it's... four of these huge storms in the last month. My gosh. We get this little sprinkling and we're like freaking out down in Virginia. It's still not <laughs> spring though. Like nature didn't get Oh, the it doesn't memo. feel like spring at all. No. I mean, it's snowing. But it looks beautiful though. The drive in, I was like, this is so serene. No, I'm not complaining. No. But you know what? And you're a trooper, Drew. I'm just going to cut you off. You're a trooper because you are still under the weather. Oh, well, you know what? And you still wanted to do right now. Here's so, the thing. Props to you. you know, I'm 34 Education. now, and I feel like I just needed to challenge myself. So I was like, what would it be like to get my wisdom teeth out and then get the flu the same week? With your son having the flu as well. Yeah, you know, so I feel like it's the time for new challenges, new life experiences. There you go. Yes. And I'm not dead. Yeah, you're here. You're so back. I'd call that a victory. Slightly less wise in the mouth. Cheers. <laughs> wise in the mouth. <laughs> Wise mouth. I'll have, yeah. to work, I'll have to work on that. Sounds like a, a wisecrack of some kind. Wise mouth. I don't know. Better than milk toast. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Look that definition up if you haven't seen that. Milk toast. M-I-L-Q-U-E. Yeah. T-O-A-S-T. Okay. Terrible thing to call someone. Indeed. Drew, we have some pens here. We do! Look at we, this. How'd this happen? We thought about doing this like a couple of weeks ago, and I've had these sitting in a tray ever since, and we were like, ah, right. we'll save it for a rainy day. Well... It's a frozen rainy day, hmm. I guess. Close so, enough. Let's yeah. go. So we have all these different pens with all different kinds of filling mechanisms. And we just wanted to kind of rapid fire go through and talk about what they are and maybe what we like or don't like about them. Because there we? are a lot of different ways there to are. put ink inside of your pen. So Andy, you're going to want to just be like all up in this space yep. here, I think. I will. So we should turn these around so that everybody can see them. Being so considerate for our audience here. Take the bottoms off too. So Take the bottoms see. off. The bodies. Sorry, the bodies off. Let's start with oh, yeah, like let's let's it. start with like the most familiar ones, yeah. that uh, you probably have seen. You know, this being the uh, cartridge converter pen. Yep. There's I a think we, Vista. I think we've all seen these guys. It is essentially a piston. I mean, a lot of what we're going to be talking about are pistons. It's just kind of what arrangement the piston is in. So a cartridge con a cartridge converter being it converts your cartridge pen into a, you know, bottled ink type pen. There you go. So we see these everywhere. This is super common, super effective. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, just about every pen brand has, you know, kind of their own version of this. Indeed. And some pens, the Lamy Vista you can't, but some pens that are cartridge converter, you can also convert to an eyedropper. That's right. Uh, we get asked about that a lot. This pen is a Conklin Classic. It's made of Ebonite, but Edison pens. There's a lot of other brands that you can do that. So it has a cartridge converter, but if you remove the cartridge or the converter, you can actually fill the body with ink, put a little silicone grease on the threads, close it up, and voila, you now have the entire body filled with ink. But while we're on converters, Brian, there are actually different type of filling me mechanisms within different converters. Yes. This one is a bladder fill converter. As you see, there is a rubber bladder going the length of the converter with a metal, uh, what would you call this? Doohickey. Metal doohickey Trail that thing. compresses the bladder, and then when you uh, let go, you'll see the bladder slowly I think kind it's of called expand. a pressure bar, technically. Pressure bar, I like it. Yes. And uh, this is also known as an aerometric style converter. That's right. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, moving right. along with bladder, let's, we're just going to go really out of order here. Let's do it. So bladder ones, um, there's a couple of different bladder filling ones. So it means that it has basically a rubber or a latex sack inside the pen. This is a uh, Waterman pen, a vintage pen. This is called a lever filler. So this has a lever that puts pressure on a metal pressure bar that's in here that compresses uh, a bladder that's on the inside. So similar concept to what we just showed with the Metropolitan, except it uses this lever. This is not super common these days, uh, but it was very common uh, in the days of old, in like the 40s and 50s and stuff like that. It was indeed. Uh, other ones that are kind of similar to that, you have the Crescent Filler, which was a Conklin uh, you know, design from back in the day. Works along the same concept. It's got this ring that you slide over that has a little slot for the um, crescent, which is basically similar concept to the lever filler, you know except, doing? yeah. See? You're pressing down on the crescent. Uh. Pressing on the crescent. I like that. Ah. And, uh, and that has this pressure bar. And I chose this one because it's kind of clear. Uh, and you can see the pressure bar going down there and compressing the bladder on the inside. And that's how it fills the pen. And then you just slide the ring over, like so. Not a whole lot of these style out there, but a couple of different ones have done it. And the uh, the button filler, right? Mm -hmm. This is kind of the same principle. You have a ring that can lock or unlock the uh, filling 
toggle, whatever you want to call it. In this case, it's a button, not a crescent, but uh, it activates another uh, pressure bar down here that, again, presses on the bladder and puts ink up into the pen. Indeed. A lot of these are a similar concepts because you basically have a bladder of ink that you're compressing. This one is called a sleeve filler. Similar concept again, it has a pressure bar. This one's kind of similar to what you had with the Metropolitan, where it's really just like kind of a converter type thing that has a bladder to put pressure on the pressure bar itself directly, and then you just slide it back over. That so thing's pretty wacky. It is pretty interesting, huh? Here's one from- This one's uh, only like two years old. Here's, can you bring it down? Yeah, here's one from Edison. Uh, Brian Gray uh, invented this uh, pen called the Menlo, and it is a pump filler. He's got a pump filler, a draw filler, he's got a lot of crazy things. This yeah. one, is this technically referred to as a diaphragm or would this wouldn't be a bladder, right? I think that's a diaphragm. Right. Yeah. So, you've got a, a brass plunger here that um, now I'm going to I'm not going to even try to explain how this works cuz <laughs> Brian will yell at me, uh, not you Brian, other Brian. Oh yeah. But um, that's pretty mean. you know, <laughs> brutal. <laughs> um, so you push the guy this guy down several times and each time ink comes up through this um, uh, this little straw here. It's not a it's a rubber straw. It's not uh, rigid and uh, over a few pumps, you'll actually get uh, a full fill right into the barrel there. So it's interesting, you know, and one thing with um, not so much with the modern ones, but with some of the vintage bladders, they're a little bit more finicky with the type of ink you can use with mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, okay, other ones that you may be slightly more familiar with is uh, Piston. So this is a Twisby 580 All. Uh, and the way this works is similar to a cartridge converter, except it's just built into the body of the pen. You unscrew the filler knob, and it moves the piston mechanism itself up and down. And that is what draws the ink up into the pen. And then as you use it, the ink level just goes down. And no, nothing too crazy, too fancy going on here. But this no, is, but it's this a tried and true method, yeah. Absolutely. Um, some other kind of variations of that you have. This is the Visconti Divina. This one has it kind of built in. It's got kind of this little, you know, slider that comes out here and then it operates with a piston on the inside as well mm -hmm. and you've got a Davina here the Desert Springs yeah this is a little bit different this one has a uh, vacuum filler on it mm -hmm. so we can move on to that if you'd like it's got a little button here on the back that if you press it once it uh, you know pops out uh, to you know allow you to kind of grab a hold of it a little bit better pull it out all the way you've got a nice uh, Davina you That's know cool. uh, styled plunger and once you press it down, you're going to feel a little bit of pressure, and then it's going to give you that negative pressure, and then pop up, and uh, it creates that vacuum that mm -hmm. then draws ink all the way up into the barrel. You're not going to be able to see it on this pen as you would some of the other clear ones that we have, but it does have an ink window that you'll be able to see if you have a full fill or not. And then once you're done, push this guy down, and you're ready to go again. And that's a similar concept to what is more traditionally known as a vacuum filler or a power filler. This is the Visconti. Homo Sapiens in the famed London Fog, one of my personal favorite pens of all time. Not as good as the Florentine Hills? Well, that's a matter of personal preference, Drew. <laughs> but uh, the way that this thing operates is you slide it up like so. It's got this rod that comes up and it has uh, you know, a seal that creates uh, pressure here. So it's creating actually a negative pressure. So that's why it's actually kind of pushing back on it as I'm moving it down. You slide it all the way down, it drops off right at the end and then that negative pressure uh, by vacuum draws ink up into the pen. So it's known as, Visconti calls it a power filler or a double reservoir power filler in some cases because yeah. it has a little extra pocket of right. air there that can hold the ink. It's probably the coolest looking way to fill your pen. I think so. Because it's you really actually cool. get to see the ink just rush into the barrel of the pen, when it's a demonstrator yeah. anyway. Pilot Custom 823. That's same, a beautiful pen. Same style of pen. Doesn't yeah. have a double reservoir, but it's still a vacuum filler. This is another kind of popular style. It operates on the same way. Uh, Visconti, or sorry, the uh, Twisby Vac 700R is a similar kind of uh, design. And then we have a couple other kind of obscure ones that I wanted to show just a little bit. Some of them are just kind of interesting and cool. Um, the Schaefer Snorkel. So this is a, a vintage design that was, you know, from the Mm, 40s, 50s, 60s, I think. Maybe 40s is too far back. I know it was in the 50s and 60s. What is it doing, Brian? So it's got this little, uh, you know. This well, I'm little, still turning it. What's happening while I'm still turning it? It's got this little straw. So it's a. this is a very specific design from Schaefer. So as you what? unscrew it, the little, uh, what do you call this thing? Straw, I'll call Snorkel. it that. Oh. Snorkel comes down out of the pen. Oh, I pull it up <clears> like <throat> this. Oh, and yeah. you get this. Look. You turn it, and yeah. that does the that does the snorkel. Okay, so you eject so that, the snorkel. That ejects the snorkel out. You, you unscrew it, and that draws the ink Whoa. into the pen. 
See, I think I've played with this thing before, but it's been a while. It has been a while. Do it again, but stop. And this is a super like moving it around. <laughs> this is a super complex mechanism that they do not make anymore. Haven't for That's years. Crazy. Um, they spent a lot of money engineering and designing this thing, but super cool. I wanted to have one in my personal collection just because of the technology. So when I push this down, does the ink go back out? Uh, no, I think when you push it down, that's when the ink actually draws up into the pen. Oh, yeah. like a vacuum. Yeah. Oh, Similar. gotcha. And then um, this other one, this is a cartridge converter pen. This is from Visconti, but it's just kind of interesting, so I wanted to show. So it's a regular cartridge converter, and that's all cool, but this is with their steel tubular nib, and it has this little thing, which they call the mosquito filler, uh -huh. because we just showed the Schaefer snorkel. It's kind of a similar concept. It's got a rubber ring on the inside that's made to fit around the tubular nib. So you fit the tubular nib inside there, and then you can use the little mosquito needle, I guess you want to call it, and you can draw ink up into your pen from the bottle. It does not get any ink on the grip itself. Whoops. <laughs> I just removed the nib. Okay, I'm just going to fix that later. <laughs> um, but yeah, super cool. Um, and then we got two more to show. Uh, one of them is this uh, Mont Blanc, and uh, I don't show a lot of Mont Blancs, uh -oh. but um, this one is more of a safety Yeah, it's kind style. of a safety pen design. Yeah, so this one is, is really interesting, you know, pretty pricey. Because uh, it's Mont Blanc, that's part of what you're paying for, but uh, it's really interesting. So you open it up and you notice like there's no nib. Like where the heck is the nib? That seems like a missed <laughs> and opportunity. And he's like wigging out like it's not, it's not showing anything. Okay, um, but this one you unscrew. I'm gonna do this wrong. Okay, pull it out, unscrew. How do I do this? I haven't operated this in a while. There we go. So you unscrew it and then boom, nib comes out. Then you pull it out a little bit, and then that operates your piston inside. That's wacky. Yeah. So yeah. it's kind of cool. So your nib kind of hides. So in what there. happens if you put the cap on without the without retracting the nib? Well, then you will crush your nib inside the cap of the pen. Will you? Yes. I'm not gonna try. But Are you sure. Nothing... I thought this thing had one of those little cool doodads in it. <laughs> That's a good question. It does. Look. What do you mean, one of those I'm trying to. Doodads? I'm trying to set you up, Brian. Oh boy. Okay. Look. Hey, we don't. <laughs> if I crush this, you're not gonna be mad, right? Oh, you're gonna fix it if you crush it. All right, what's happening here? I know, I'm pretty sure if you push mm. this on. Look, it's got one of those little posts in it. What do you mean it's got one of those little posts it in it? It pushes it down. Does it? I don't know. Does I thought, it now? I thought it did. No. I don't know about Are that. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure that it doesn't, like, retract it for you. Mm. I think the post just holds it in there to keep it from, like, leaking or anything when you're carrying it around. You're probably right. I'm not going to break your pen. Please don't. Okay. And then we've got one more to show, which I think is one of the coolest. Oh, gosh. And yes. you and I are both big fans of yes. the Conid. Uh, this is the Minimalistica. But uh, their design is super cool. So, um, you know, it's just a pressure fit cap. And uh, the way that this thing operates is just super, can you see that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you unscrew this. It's cool because it's, it fills the whole body with ink. It's a very efficient, space-wise, very efficient filling mechanism. So it seals it off just like a vacuum filler would, but it operates like a piston. So you unscrew this and it's got threads behind the seal that go into the, um, the actual piston seal. And then you twist it to unlock it. And then it goes down, you fill it just kind of like a plunger. Golly. And then it's got this little hook here that locks in place to hold the piston seal. You unscrew it once it's filled with ink and then you let it go down. It's the coolest. It's super awesome. And in a way, it kind of does have a double reservoir, too. It does, yeah. It's got a little little compartment in here that holds the ink, and then if you want to let more ink down, you just unscrew that, and it just drops it down. Or you can write with it unscrewed, and it can just flow continuously. Okay, but what this thing does, Brian, cool. it just has that post so that you don't crush your cap. Oh, the, so it the, hits the feed yeah, instead of the the nib. post is hitting the feed, so it's okay. not going to let you. Okay, go. fair enough. So, so it's not like a self-retracting Right, the Noodler's one, the, the Noodler's safety pen pushes it. This one just stops oh, okay. it. Says, hey, no. Hey, no. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. There's a Mont Blanc. Don't screw it up. <laughs> That's the clip right there. That's, that's a mop mop. Okay. <laughs> cool. So that was showing you a lot of different filling mechanisms. Yeah, you got all that right. I may have only broken one pen in the process, but that's okay. And I almost broke Brian's mop block. So that's all good. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Have a great snowy day and ride on.